innate immune defenses. These are defenses that our body is born with. So we are born with these. Unlike adaptive immunity, which you can kind of hear in the name, it adapts over time to the different things that you're exposed to. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the different kinds of innate or defenses that you are born with. The first are physical barriers. Oops. The very most key of these is unbroken skin. We're going to highlight that in yellow and then trace the skin of our little person here. As everyone knows, if you get a cut, that is a possible place where an infection can start. Okay, and then, then let's look at um, unbroken mucous membranes. You could say undamaged mucous membranes, but I want you to connect this idea that mucous membranes can be damaged and then let in an infection just like unbroken or just like skin can be broken and then let in infection. So we'll think about the different um, types of mucous membranes. There's the respiratory tract and then why don't we use a different color pen for ways that it can be broken. The respiratory tract could be damaged by smoking, so smokers are more likely to get respiratory infections, pollution in the air, already having an infection, for example if someone has um, a, a respiratory infection like a rhinovirus, a cold, then that inflammation in and the potential damage of some of those cells lining the respiratory tract can actually make it more likely that that person gets a bacterial pneumonia. So a viral infection can set the stage for a secondary bacterial infection. And then um, asthma and allergies are really chronic damage in the respiratory tract that sets the stage for increased risk of infection. Okay, then the GI tract, gastrointestinal tract, and that can be broken by, for example, if you think in the mouth, gingivitis, or sores in the mouth, like canker sores, or other cuts. And then if you go farther down, um, a current GI infection damages the intestinal lining, so same as with the respiratory, and then makes it more likely to get a secondary bacterial infection, and maybe um, damage from gluten. So gluten um, is an irritant to most people's GI tract, some more than others, and because it irritates the GI tract, then it can set the stage for a bacterial infection. Okay, then the reproductive tract. And I think we better put some of these, let's outline these because it's going to be hard to tell them apart when you're studying on your own. So these are some things that can damage the respiratory mucous membrane. And then in orange, these can damage the GI tract. Oops, sorry, this should go down like that. And oh, I should include with the reproductive tract also the urinary tract. So in males, 
the penis carries the urine out of the body as well as the semen out of the body. So they have um, some a, a combined genitourinary tract. And in females, they have uh, the vagina, which is the reproductive tract, and then the urethra for the urinary tract. Then one other... Oh, and so um, there could be um, irritants either here from, um, like, for example... Uh, friction during sex can actually make a woman more likely to get an infection, a reproductive tract infection, or a urinary tract infection from the friction. Um, and also um, any kind of abrasion or something like that from, from clothes can actually set the stage. Or um, uh, washing too much or using harsh soaps and things like that can damage the reproductive or urinary tract. Douching is never a good idea, um, and those things could set the stage for a reproductive or urinary tract infection. And then, um, how, about, so how about irritants from washing or uh, irritation from sex? And then one last mucous membrane is the conjunctiva. And that can be irritated by um, like wind or dry air or um, a, a scratch. Okay, so now you can kind of review what are the physical barriers, unbroken skin and unbroken mucous membranes. Now let's look at some chemical barriers. I'm just going to tilt this just a little bit. chemical barriers. All right, now is where it gets a little fun, too. Let's put some fluid on this guy or gal. What do you think that is? Sweat, right? Well, what do you know But sweat is one of um, the chemical barriers for our body? What about this one? saliva but what about this one even though this person looks pretty happy tears or a chemical barrier what about this one urine and Vaginal secretions. What about in the stomach? Right, stomach acid. And what about what makes your skin so soft? oils on the skin and the hair. Okay, so let's talk about oh, let me put this here. Some different ways that these protect us. Well, many of them have what's called lysozyme. So I'm going to use um, an orange pen. Let's see. Sweat, saliva, and tears all contain an enzyme called lysozyme. Oops. Remember, um, Alexander Fleming is the one that discovered and or purified this lysozyme. Um, and lysozyme, remember, uh, damages bacterial cell walls.
And in the case of tears and sweat, salt, right? It's salty. And you might even remember which kind of bacteria lives better in your mouth where it's not salty and which lives better on your skin where it could be salty. Do you remember that Staphylococcus is salt tolerant and can live on your skin? And sali or Streptococcus is not salt tolerant and is found more in your mouth. And then in the case of urine, it's uh, low pH, it's acidic. And this inhibits most bacteria from growing. Most bacteria do not thrive in an acidic environment. Even H. pylori that likes to live in the stomach is actually not, doesn't do well in an acidic environment. It's just able to um, burrow down into the mucus of the stomach lining and avoid the acid. So urine and stomach acid and vaginal secretions are all acidic. And then in the case of the lubricating oils that we have on our skin and on our hair, they really um, do a couple of things. One thing is that by lubricating the skin, it's like and putting oil on it, you know that oil helps to preserve leather, right? It, it keeps it from cracking. So um, supple skin doesn't crack easily. That, of course, is going to be really important for what we looked up at here, here, unbroken skin. Unbroken skin is supple and flexible because it's well oiled. And so something that um, is not a good idea is overwashing all of that oil off of our body makes it more likely to be cracked. And in fact, nurses and doctors that have to wash their hands constantly throughout the day for surgeries, let's say, um, often deal with very dry skin on their hands, uh, washing off those natural protective oils. And then that's not all though. The oil also contains antimicrobial fatty acids that when they come into contact with bacteria actually inhibit them from growing. This is similar to, um, you've probably heard of uh, coconut oil. In fact, coconut oil is used is often recommended to use on our skin uh, to fight fungal infections. So fats have um, some antimicrobial properties to them. Okay, I think I said all I wanted to on that. I'm going to take a break, and we'll come back and look at a couple other innate immune defenses.